in chess, there's this thing where they talk about how the middle four squares are the most important squares. Because yes. if you protect those squares and you're the one who has control of it, you, can, you have the control of the game, right? In Dota, it's actually the exact same thing. The person who has control over the mid lane will have control over the game. Oh. This game, we have Tinda playing Keeper of the Light. You are position five, right? Yes, yes. Okay. Correct. Great. Were you first picked this game? You were, right? Prepare. Yeah. Else? Yeah, I think so. I don't remember. I right. think and, so. and this is a party game. You play with everybody, like only these three. Yes. Oh yeah, it's a five man party game, right? Awesome. Correct. Got Correct. some cool friends that you get to play with. All right. So why don't you tell me a little bit about like your wait, starting... wait, wait, before you start, what's your guild level? Uh, like almost six. Damn it. Okay. Why, what level are you, is your guild? We're almost six two. We'll catch up. Okay. We'll we'll two. <laughs> so tell so t why don't you tell us a little bit about like um in this game like what was your thoughts in terms of the items you bought and what you're planning what you were planning to do inside this game. Uh, I just I just wanted some speed. Okay. To be able to harass, I know I can't do much, but you know, uh -huh. if I was gonna lane with, uh, yeah, if I was gonna lane with uh, the BA, then I was, I thought, I thought movement was important. Okay. And I just wanted some damage, and I wanted to get magic stick later, so I just took two branches, and I and I just got two six well tangos because I had to share two. I didn't want to, but I had to. Yeah, you have to. That that's just a must. Like you have to give your mid laner some tangos. That's just how it's been. So, uh, no, I I just want to hear like your thought process, like what why you bought what you did. So I understand like how you're thinking, right? And yeah. whatever you said was in, well, that was great. It was perfect. Um, did you really think it was a PA offlane, or did you think Ursa might be the offlaner? I think I thought PA might be the offlaner. Okay. Either way, like if it's Ursa or PA, it's both kind of the same, right? Like they do. Uh, they do a lot of physical damage. So yeah. So I I love this build up. Um and. Uh, I'm not Thank sure if you, you thought about it, but if the Lone Druid is your safe laner, he doesn't need as much support, right? So Correct. You I can, left like, him after a while. Yeah, and... so you can go in and out of the laning stage, and Windlace is, is amazing for that, so they can't really catch you, right? Yeah. Okay, cool. So um, let's 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 watch um, your early game. What you do, I love it. You get out of the base right away. Perfect. Um, one thing, you can move your courier, right? Like this thing. Um, a lot of players start doing that. You can start helping your guild members too, remembering that. Where like you move your courier yeah. out here. So, because the oh. earlier early game couriers they're very slow. So you want to like put them out here. So when you buy your items and they come out, they uh -huh. can reach you like let's say five seconds faster. Uh... Make sense? Because the shop reaches up until here. You see the Earth Spirit? He's already doing that. Your boy Earth Spirit, Mr. Enrique. No, oh, wait, this 2011, 12, 12, 13. Eight years, and I never thought about that. No. Yeah. I mean, I even I don't do it right now, but like, I will start doing it more often. But, like, this is something, like, people have been doing for a while. But obviously now, because you have personal careers, like, you can't do it for your hero, right? Like, before in the past, what would happen was yeah. supports would just put that there for their mid laner or something. Because the mid laner is always the first one to use a career. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so let's uh, let's see. So now you start off. Uh, you go bottom, going city of the bounty rune. So you think there's a better position for you to do this stuff than just sit down here like this? So sometimes what happens is like people come from different angles, right? So you can yeah. like position yourself to like get more vision if you want. They can understand uh -huh. things too. It's not bad. I mean, it's just like small things. But whatever you're doing right now, oh, this is this is some good stuff. Uh, oh, 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 thick blinding light. Throw the rune, I like it. I like it. Invoker even comes down to the bottom lane trying to help get the rune too, but it doesn't matter. No, that was pretty nice, you know. I, I was I, like, I, suck it, sucker. I'm, dude, that, that, I'm not gonna lie, that was actually very impressive. Um, how you like position yourself here and like blinding lighted them away so your guy can get the rune. Yes. So 30 seconds, you're already looking for the pull, it looks like, right? Yes. Or, okay, so is there something better you can do? Because you can see the enemy support on the offlaner here, right? What do you think you should do? What, what do you think you should do from this position instead of like actually running here at 30 seconds? I think... 
I don't know. <laughs> it's okay. You think I could? You think I could have given more vision or something? No. So in this position, right? Because yeah. like, okay, like, because you're a laundry. He's a laundry. You feel like he's more okay, right? In this early levels, especially in the first wave, there's two things you can do. One, if you really want to pull, you can help your laundry push out the lane, right? So that the enemy support can't come and contest you on the small camp when you pull. Uh -huh. Or yeah. you can be here for like the next, you know, 15 seconds, plus whatever. The way the, the camp doesn't spawn until minute one, right? Okay. Okay. So you have a lot of time before, you know, the minute one wave spawns here, makes yeah. its way all the way here for you to make a pull and connect it. So during this time, that's like minimum of like 40 seconds, you could probably be hitting these guys, right? You're a range hero. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you could be helping your lone druid get more lassets by yes. applying pressure onto these guys. And also the plan, yes. denying creeps, right? So that would probably be the better play than, for example, you just running first, here. First minute, yeah, yeah. For like, you know, whatever seconds, like, pretty much... It's like, if you were in the fountain during this time, it would be the same exact thing that you'd be doing, right? Correct, okay. Because you don't have right. you don't have any like any anything spawning for like a minute uh, thirty seconds at least. So, this, so like yes. fifty five seconds is the first time you actually hit this guy. But yeah, if you were positioned, for example, like here in this angle here, and you were hitting this uh, Ursa, right? Uh -huh. Maybe your Laundruid can also hit him, and he's gonna be annoyed. And he's just they might just like walk away. Yeah, I don't know what I was thinking. Maybe I got brain stuck or something. The plan was definitely to to, to harass him. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. Um. But it happens, right? So when we go into the lane, we should think like two things. Are we going to harass this guy and like try to bully them out of the lane or like get denied and last hits? Or are we going to focus on pushing the lane out and going out and pulling the small camp? Um, I've seen a lot of professional teams, especially in North America, they do this a lot where they kind of like push the lane in level one. So they get that level like XP advantage. Because like, if, for example, if you have all these creeps and you're killing their creeps, you're going to hit level two before the enemy, right? Yeah. And... Um, that is going to give you like a strength in the lane and mm -hmm. as your carry is using that strength to push the lane in constantly to the enemy, the support goes and he pulls the camp. So you get XP here and you're also denying XP from your enemy. And it's like, let's say the enemy support comes to like try to contest you, then your carry is just going to destroy their offlaner because he already has that XP advantage in the lane. Okay. Okay. So let's keep watching what you're doing. So now you go back to the lane. You know, you deny some creeps with your carry. You also hit them. I like it. This is what you should be doing like from minute th from like 30 seconds in, right? Mm -hmm. um, so you do that. That's really good. So I should have just like before a minute more, I should have just started harassing right away. Yeah, exactly. As soon as the lane already meets, you could be like harassing or uh, denying and last hitting creeps. But obviously when you're harassing, you want to like position yourself in a way that... Um, you don't pull aggro, right? Yeah. So aggro range is like, uh, I believe, five hundred. Um, I gotta check that up again. Uh, sorry. It's really Big less. Senpai. So what what you can do is like you can like be in these trees here or here and just like try to hit them from the opposite angles, so they also can't hit you back so easily. Okay. And if you see, here, is do you feel like you could have done something more like during this time? Like you're hitting them, you feel good, right? That you can hit them. Yeah. You know, they're not hurting you or anything like that. Mm hmm. You see what happened? Yeah. So maybe, like you said, push out, push out another wave, right? So that I can get a proper pull. And then okay. There, they stay. Yeah. So when start. you're when you're doing when you're thinking about pulling, like if you see these creeps right now. So I went back ten yeah. seconds, right? So the creep wave is over here. The small camp is over here, right? And you're over here. So your positioning right now is amazing because you can easily you have a, you have like a triple threat going, right? You can either harass them, you can deny losses, or you can walk back in, you can pull the camp. Okay. Right? Like, you can do all these things right now from this position. So, when you look at your creep waves, how many creeps does your enemy have? Right now. Right now? It's yeah. Just three. And how many do you have? Five. Five. So, these creeps will naturally push up, right? Yeah. So, so just, just it's, do the... Yeah. So so from here, it makes a lot of sense for you to go back here and just, just pull right away, right? Because this lane is already like, it, this, these are like your your carry's bodyguards, 
they're gonna go into the next creep wave they're gonna protect him and he's gonna use this uh, creep advantage to bully mm -hmm. them while you go and pull here already so right now you don't need to push his lane anymore because your creep your carry already has more creeps like um as a support and like other you know good players they will always think like where the next creep wave is going to be mm -hmm. so this creep wave because you have so many already because like they couldn't push out the lane is going to be up here that means you can already be pulling here right now and what's going to happen is when you pull here is you're going to give all solo xp to your carry they're going to be sharing xp and you're going to be getting xp from this camp by just pulling it and killing it all but what if is it this is this is a question i've always like okay struggling because because when i play a lot of solo games so what you said i tried to do that when i uh, pull in the middle right um i just pulled the new and the, the middle creeps and when i try to get experience from that the carries complain a lot they're like don't stick there just you know get more harass them harass them even though uh -huh, the uh -huh. they're so far ahead okay so who's right here? right okay so the reason why they're probably saying that is because the lane was not pushed and you pulled when the lane was going into them instead. Does that make sense? So let's say they're the ones who have five creep advantage and you're the one who has three and you pull. Yeah. What's going to happen is your carry is going to be pressured under the tower yeah, with too the, many creeps. Yeah. So the right thing to do is you pull when your lane is pushing out to the enemy. Mm -hmm. And then you tell your carry, hey, I'm pulling. Be patient. And... We're gonna have like a double creep wave after that, after your pull finishes. And then you're gonna pressure them with that. Okay. So, like, uh, as a support, your, go your job is to maximize your experience without trying to yeah. like leech too much experience from your core if possible. And wow. um, by pulling, that's what you do, but you also like remove XP from the enemy. So, when you're like, let's say, level three, for example, which is like a really good timing and you can get it really quickly uh, if you do pulls, that's the time where you wanna be very aggressive on the enemy. Okay. Okay. So uh -huh. again, like what well, you made you made a very good point. Like why are people telling me, hey, I don't pull, just come help me? It's because the lane was probably pushing into your team and they mm -hmm. were already being pressured. But right now the Earth and the Eye are being pressured because of all these creeps. So you have the opportunity and the luxury to go and pull and get yourself XP and deny creeps from them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I'm gonna keep playing here. See what you do so here you're like oh you, you're so tempted because there's an ursa sitting here right but yeah. imagine like instead of these like two right clicks or three right clicks you do on them if you go here and pull these creeps you're gonna instead of like den maybe denying these things you can probably guarantee at least two creeps getting denied here that they will get zero xp from right doesn't that sound amazing it does and on top of that you get xp from all the creeps that you kill here too mm -hmm. and your lone dread gets all the xp in the lane Sounds amazing, right? It does. Like, pulls are, you know, the best thing that ever happens in Dota 2 for a support. Apart from free orb swords that you can buy without having to spend money. <laughs> That's the second best thing. Alright, so we're gonna keep on watching here. And you can see here, like, you keep, like, harassing them, the lanes here, but again, like, if you were, if you were able to go out there and do a pull, it would have been pretty sick. So what you can uh, tell your carry player when you're about to go pull is you can tell him, hey, push out the lane. Mm -hmm. Okay, tell him to push out the lane and um, that will naturally uh, allow you to pull the lane back by doing the pull. And right. it, will, it will give your carry more farm, more XP, and it will give you XP and less XP to your enemy. These are like things that aren't apparent when you're watching a replay, but it's yeah. like, this is a knowledge that you need to have. You know like these are like the small things that differentiate that exactly these are small things that add up to be like big things all the all, all the time so right now it's like uh two minutes and then here what does it look like you're doing and you're gonna pull the side lane love it so this is like your natural instincts that tell you like oh the wings up here you want to pull right yeah that was that one was just pure Instinct. It was so natural, exactly, pure instinct, and it was perfect. That's this is, this is a great thing you can do. So these are like the small things that you could have done, like if you were thinking about it, like pulling and stuff. But this thing, what you did, is good. And look what happened. Like before, this Ursa and I can react. Two creeps already got denied. Radiant bottom tower is under attack. Hey. 
Radiance top tower is under attack. Yeah, feel free to ask like any other questions or whatever, like as we keep watching this. I'm just like looking at all the things that you're doing. Um but yeah, like Bad. definitely it's three minutes now, you haven't got any small campos or even checked if there is a small campo, right? Because if there's no small campo, you're gonna wanna go and um deward that, right? Like yeah. sentries, like for example, the outpost here, it will show mm -hmm. the wards here because it has um a true sight. I don't know mm -hmm. if you knew that, right? Yeah, it, yeah. So that's true sight. So here, so all you have to do is like put a sentry here and it will deward this camp instantly. And uh like this small camp is like as a is your support's best friend. Because like what happens is um some people also ask me, like, why don't we stack and pull? You can stack and pull, but it's actually most of the time better to just single pull it. Because you can kill off the camp and get all the experience. Because if you stack yeah. and pull, what normally happens is it'll just deny all the creeps and you these creeps will actually stay yeah, alive. Okay. And you sense. don't get XP. Right? Yeah. And that's how you, that, that's what you want. Because right now, like this Laundred, if you were like pulling this, maybe he's like level 4 already and you're like level 3 right now. Um, if you were able to like get this pull, then such. Like you guys do really good bottom, regardless. But obviously, like you want you wanna be able to do that every game, right? Has been killed. Makes sense. It looks like uh, you really love pulling this big camp, huh? I don't <laughs> know why. It's yes. good. No, it's 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 really good um, to pull this big camp. But obviously, like you're not always gonna get all the XP, and most of the time you share it with the enemy offlaners. Yeah. Because they just I walk over. Looked at over the here. map and the yeah. I don't know. No, it was just natural for you. Like you're not you're just not thinking about this um, small camp pretty much. Away. But I like your skill build and uh, this is like, you know, perfect for Kato. You're going for boots first. You even go bottom rune at 4 minutes to try and see if you can get the rune. Um, That's a really good thing and very high level support players do that. Where like, uh, before 4 minutes spawn you can go here. Especially if the enemy mid hero is a hero who buys bottle, right? Uh, like, yeah. as a support, like your number one thing is to always look at the timer. I don't know if you do that already. But, yes. Uh, it's Okay. I forget right. time to time, but yes, try to focus on the timing. Exactly. That's like yeah. the number one thing, right? Like timer is everything. Like it stacks, um, power runes, bounty runes. You just outpost, yes. I always try to get the outpost at nine fifty, but yeah, that's not always possible. Yeah, exactly. All those things are very, very important. So now I'm assuming what what are you what are you thinking about at this point in the game? Hmm, I think I was just waiting for the bounties now. Yep. Walking in, huh? Okay. Oh! Oh! The next level plays! Bounty. I like that. You think you're too kind? <laughs> Alright, now school me. No, I'm not so nice. It's true though, it's true. That was, that was actually Something very, very top. nice. Yeah, you do your first uh, single pull in the small camp. Yeah, a lot of experience. You go yeah, and help it, your Ursa. This, this is the mistake I made, right? Like you said, it had to be pushed out a bit, and then the I guess yeah. No, this one was okay because um, you have Blonde Druid, right? Like he can tank under the tower, no problem. And it was good because now that you're gonna have a double wave, and you can use this double wave to push the enemy tower. Huh. When so this is actually the time to actually put like double wave a tower. At what point, like five there... minutes? Five minutes with the siege creep. So this is actually a super like high level gameplay that professional teams do all the time. Where at 5 minutes when the catapult wave comes, they'll single pull and then they'll double wave the enemy tower. And like I try to pressure about it. That. I was just pulling, you know? Yeah, yeah, you were just thinking just, naturally. Exactly. I was just like, yeah, yeah. Hey, just listen, pull. maybe your natural instincts are just amazing, you know? Maybe you're just meant to be. It could be from all those years of Pro Dota that you've been watching. TI-15, here I come! Yeah. But see, oh. but you see, like, the difference here is, like, after you made the double wave, you went and pulled another creep camp, right? So, like, you're not, you weren't really thinking about, like, pressuring the tower yeah, at this yeah. point. You were just thinking about getting experience. I told you, yes. Yeah. So, what you're doing here is amazing. You're just pulling the small camp, but you just want to be doing this, like, earlier in the game if possible. So, you okay. get that XP advantage yeah, even earlier. Is under attack. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, we're going to be focused more on, like, your wards and stuff now. Um, I think you planted this ward here. For the bounty rune and such, it's pretty good. Um, at this point in the game, I feel like your laundry doesn't really need much help, and mm -hmm. you probably wanted to like go and play with your around, earth spirit yeah. and the heroes who are can fight, right? So earth spirit yeah. and boy spirit are really good at fighting, and I think at this point in the game, like you could be, you could have been like top lane with these guys, right? And pressuring this phantom assassin, 
and slowing down oh. his farm. While your lone druid can pretty much free farm bottom and not be affected by anything. He's level 6, the enemy offlaners are like level 4. Mm -hmm. Right? But you're still out here like pulling creeps. Because like, what this does, if let's say, um, when you feel like your carry is comfortable enough to farm bottom, like what you do is you drop a ward for him, maybe like even in the lane, right? Uh, yeah. Like somewhere, like you hide from the trees here, you go out here, you plan like a ward here so you can see any rotations coming bottom. And then mm -hmm. you TP top lane. And then you play with your offlaner and then your support. And then all you have to do, just by existing in this lane, you will apply so much pressure onto this Phantom Assassin. Because he knows that there's three heroes here and he's not going to want to walk up. And your, uh, your offlaner and your support is going to feel confident yeah. to take any engagement. Mm -hmm. Make sense? Yeah. So by doing that, you can like pretty much shut down the enemy's farm while also giving your carry free farm. Because he's not going to be afraid because you warded for him. And he's already strong because he's a lone druid, right? Yeah. It'll be great. Because like right now, you kind of feel like you're just pulling, you're just getting XP, right? Yeah. Which is not bad. I mean, you do TP top lane at 5 minutes and it looks like this TP is because of a reaction to the invoker, yes. right? Yeah, it was a TP to the reaction to the invoker. It's not bad. Um, but obviously, like, what I was saying is, you want to be the aggressor more than top, just, yeah. like, react to their pressure sometimes. Mm -hmm. It's good, though, that you decide to help your team out. And... Do you always do this, where you go, like, 2-1-2 two, two with Keeper? Yeah. Okay. I like it. I mean, like, if 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 you feel like that's your favorite uh, path, that's good too. I see a lot of players go for like the max chakra magic, mm -hmm. and just like kind of like reduce their heroes cooldown, their teammates yeah. cooldowns and stuff. They got some wards. You got some sentries for yourself. Did you plant this ward yourself here? Yes. Yeah, you did, right? So you did this for the invoker rotation, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. I like it. That was pretty good. Um. Obviously, in this game, it's very hard for you to go into the enemy jungle because you don't have any towers taken yet. Uh, so you can just keep putting up this defensive vision. You know that the invoker is going to rotate top. That's really, really good. Uh, that's a very nice heads up play from you. Okay, are you DC'd? I think so. Yeah. Because <laughs> my internet goes on and off. And... Oh, no, wait. I was waiting for the. Outpost. Okay, I didn't ah, see Yeah, I was waiting for Okay. The oh that's really good i love that i love that play obviously like there you probably want to go up the hill right so the enemies can't yeah. see you you're down there it's okay uh, that was that was really really sick I, um, that was very nice you went for the bounty or so, sorry the power rune and you see an engagement happening middle very good play <laughs> and where do you go now so what do you think you should do now like it's 10 minutes in um the catapults the, the, the... are alive again yeah, the the point here was to push out the lanes now, cause uh, yeah, we were gonna we were gonna push mid, I believe, or something. Okay, cool. Cause that yeah, invoker was dead. Right. Uh, Pressure. We need to right. And your earth spirit, it looks like he's also rotating. But Missing where are you going? Dyer's where are you going? Time. I think I had a change of mind. Oh, maybe because. Uh. Missing top. Yeah, it's just... Ooh, big mm. ulti, okay. Oh, because of this! I think we might have been in chat and he might have asked me to come bot. Okay, fight. okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. And I almost died too. Alright, that's your first death, but you know, you got some kills, it's okay. Alright, so this play, whatever you just did, like, in my opinion, it feels a lot more, like, random. And just go mm -hmm. with the flow of like what somebody else said, then like something calculated and something planned. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what you were telling me just now, when we were watching this, you're like, oh, the invoker's dead, we're gonna push mid, right? Yep. Was amazing. But That's you guys I... like, yeah. yeah. But you guys like derailed from your plan to do something else. Yes. Correct. Right? Correct. And um, I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna teach you something, is like, Every time this catapult is up, this is something like pro teams do all the time. Every time this mm -hmm. catapult is up, you should always look, especially the early catapults, 5-minute catapult, 10-minute catapult, these are the most important ones. Um, you need to look like where the catapults are still alive and you go and like apply pressure Push. with them. Okay. 
apply pressure exactly like you don't like you're trying to push but you're not like committing super hard to the push right you're kind of just like protecting these catapults because the enemy is tr always trying to kill them think of it like it's your girlfriend right you got to protect her that's the catapult that's what the catapults are all right, all right. Makes sense. So this invoker died. What what would have happened was um in this should've game. Stayed and pushed, right? yeah. yeah, you you should have stayed here. Your earth yeah. space should have rotated all the way around here, wait for this invoker, maybe he'll TP in, right? Uh -huh, and you guys uh -huh. with this husk would have killed this tower. If uh -huh. let's say this tower doesn't die, or like if if, if like uh, the invoker doesn't TP or whatever, or this tower is dying, maybe what would have happened was is Io and Ursa, one of them might have TP'd mid lane instead of you having to walk bottom to kill them. Okay. Yeah, this mid tower, I'm going to tell you right now, is the most important tower in the entire game. For both teams. Like, mid tower is, like, by far the most important tower. Have you ever played chess before? Yep. Yep. I, like, at, at, like, a higher level or, like, have you uh, understood, like, how that game works? Wait, you mean the actual chess or you mean auto chess? Chess, chess. Like, chess, actual chess. Chess, yes. I, I mean, not as high but okay yeah. so in chess there's this thing where they talk about how the middle four squares are the most important squares because yes. if you protect those squares um and you're the one who has control of it you, can, you have the control of the game right in dota it's actually the exact same thing the person who has control over the mid lane will have control over the game because if you can see the mid lane right uh i'm just gonna go in slow motion if this tower dies you can enter the jungle like this you can go like this you can move to the side lane super easily any way you want and you can like control the enemy's farm right so any chance you have to apply pressure to the mid lane and take their tower you should take it it's like your number one priority and as a support player it's sometimes your duty to make those calls happen because your carries are probably like not thinking about it at all or your mid laners not thinking about it so it's just like because we have much more space so we just give a reminder or something like just just be aware of the of the map and what you should do next right yeah like because right here you, you have the enemy mid laner dead and you see a catapult like it should be like your instinct be like yo earth spirit have, yeah. hey can you go around mid lane and be ready to kill whoever tp's middle Right? Because you see four heroes on the map. You see two guys bottom, you see two guys top, right? Mm -hmm. That means, like, when you go to attack this mid tower, if people have Someone's to defend gone, this, yeah. they're going to TP in one by one and feed. Right? They're not already set up to defend this tower anymore. So if you were also here beside your Huskar and, like, maybe hitting this tower or going from the side, they're ready to, like, blinding light someone into your Huskar, they're just going to keep feeding nonstop. And then after this tower is dead, what can you do with your keeper? You can probably just walk into one of these two jungles and ward in there. And all yeah. of a sudden, the enemy can't farm there anymore. Because every time you see them, you're just going to go there and kill them. And kill them, okay. Makes sense? Yes. Yeah, Very good sense. It's really, it's really, really good. Um, so, you, you might even win, like, games out of nowhere. Like, r just randomly, just by doing this one move. Where you just go mid with your mid laner, with a 10-minute catapult, and just take the tower. And, like, mm -hmm. you bring, like, uh, you, you tell your support to, like, go around. You even had your Void Spirit here. Like, you could really have four heroes in this mid lane. Yeah. Yeah. So you can you can imagine what would happen if this Earth Spirit was already back here. This Invoker TP's uh, in. He's dead. And then he, yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's just straight up dead right there. I mean, you guys did a good move bottom anyway. But obviously, it was more, like, this was more spontaneous than anything else. Yeah, you could have gotten more at the mid. So you buy Tranko Boots, gonna fast forward a bit more, keep you back bottom, give some region to your Earth Spirit, give him some mana, good support place. <laughs> Sentry, this thing. I love, like, um, you know, how, what do you, what, how do you feel about Sentries? You always buy them, a lot of it. They're so expensive, and I feel like they're so important, so I just get a bunch. Oh yeah, because if you ever get a ward, um, it gives you more gold, right? Yes. Like, then the cost of the sentry is so good. And also sees like heroes and stuff like that. So do you see, um, do you feel something awkward about like this last minute that you just played? Does it feel awkward for you in this game? Like you will go bottom, you sentry, but then you like kind of walking back and forth, right? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I felt like, yeah, this was, this was, I think this is where I felt pretty completely useless because I don't have my ulti and I was like, okay, I can't do much, just mana push away and probably yeah push the wave yeah 
See, the reason why you know you feel this way is because you're not the one making the aggressive move. You're trying to make something like a bit passive, right? Mm -hmm. So do you feel like instead of TPing bottom, giving mana to Zerus Spirit, or like even if you did give mana to him, do, do you think there's something more you could have done than like just kind of chill here? Maybe I, sh I should have rotated with him, right? Amazing. That would have been great, right? Yeah. Like if you, or even, even though, and you even have two words, right? What if... Mm -hmm. When I after you gave mana here, you two yeah. smoked, maybe towards the mid lane. Uh -huh. And while you guys are smoking mid lane, you could have warded somewhere, like maybe on this hill, right? Uh -huh. Or maybe behind a tier one tower, so you guys can yeah. like get the next point of attack. So maybe yeah, uh, just okay. Because you see, um, wards is what like is gonna help you get the next objective. So wherever your wards are, that's normally where your heroes are gonna gravitate themselves naturally. Uh -huh. If you understand that, you will know like, okay, how important words are. So that and that will help you like plant your next vision. So here, like, after, after um, you TP bottom and you help uh -huh. this guy, you could just you could just walk with it. Like you give him mana, you give him all these resources. It's great. Maybe yeah, you could have even bought a smoke for yourself, right? Because like you have uh -huh. two words, you don't want to see, you don't want the enemy to see where you're warding either. You're warded, yeah. Yeah, I'm sure you've watched plenty of professional position fives, right? Um, they do this all the time. So you just smoke with the Earth Spirit. You guys go here. You plant a ward jungle. here. You plant a yeah. ward behind the tower, maybe. Or you plant a ward in the jungle, something like that. And then you guys could attack this uh, Invoker again in the mid lane. Mm -hmm. And just, you know, destroy him. Like, ruin his game. Like, he's going to be so pissed <laughs> off, right? Correct, uh, yeah. Yeah, another play that could have been good for you too in this game maybe was to TP top lane with your avoid spirit and then try uh -huh. to apply pressure here. Because you're not taking any okay. farm away from your carry, right? By being here. Yeah. And blasting correct. and doing stuff. But you're applying a lot of pressure to the enemy. Whatever it is, you kind of want to play with your other support player. Because you guys are playing mm -hmm. party queue, so I'm sure he's going to listen to you, right? Mm -hmm. So you're going to be like, yo, let's go play together. And then you guys go together somewhere with one of your strong cores, like either your Huskar or your Void Spirit, and then you just start mm -hmm. applying pressure in uh, one of those lanes. And when I say pressure, I mean like you don't have to kill them, you just have to be there. Okay, makes sense. And that will always just naturally give so much space to your teammates. It's a lot, right? To take in. Yeah. No, because it's, it's, it's like it's so simple. But you, I don't know why you don't thinking think of it when you're engaged. Yeah, because guess... yeah, because we're not thinking at that level, right? We're just like playing the game just very naturally and going with the flow. Go with the flow, yeah. That's it. So here, your teammates TP bottom. They make a play together, and you guys are grouped up. Amazing. You guys get some kills. Take the tower, you even sentry this just to make sure that there's no vision here. I love it. I love that you're spamming wards and sentries. It's so good to spam sentries. Um especially if you think that they might have vision there. Because they last such a long time too, right? These wards. Yeah. Yeah, okay, so here, um, you guys smoke up. I think the Earth Spirit smokes you. Was that his smoke? Okay, he smokes you. And at this point you have three wards in your backpack, right? Yeah, I should have warded first and then... Yeah, yeah, Because yeah. if you ward while you're smoked, the enemy never sees where you're warding. Yeah. It's so hard for them to de-ward you, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, it's so it's so it's it's such a good thing to like be able to plant vision while you're smoked. Because like what happens here is like you guys go on mid lane, which is okay. But obviously, maybe more than this position 5 Jakiro kill, it would have been much better if you were able to get off at least two observer wards somewhere where the enemy mm -hmm. don't see it. But as a position 5, like, it's very important that you get these wards out without the enemy seeing you, if possible. Oh. I know, I know. <laughs> this like is a prime... money, money in the drain. <laughs> this is a prime example of, like, why warding while smoked is, would be so good, right? Because you kind of just went there, you planned a ward, and, like, enemy just saw you. They just de-warded it. And at this point in the game, like, you see how, like, your map is kind of just black, right? You don't have like any vision of the enemy um, uh, whatsoever. I mean, like the the way that you cast spells and stuff is very good. Like you you know where to be. You know that you need to support your teammates. You, you know all of that stuff. You're pushing out the lanes. You're helping your allies. See here at 15 minutes here with your 
offlaner now obviously these are the things like i feel um some proteins may maybe like higher level players they would do that a bit earlier in the game right uh, what we talked about like playing with your offlaner yeah. and your support oh goodness that that's the scariest thing as a freaking coddle it's like, Getting a dagger hit in your face by a Phantom Assassin. Because <laughs> you know you're dead every time that happens. Yes, it was a very, very scary moment. <laughs> oh, you're actually alive. Nice. I know. You went to the right side. You survived. Very good. You mana leak the enemy. Okay, so um, I just want to say like when you play Kato, it's definitely yeah, a lot better for you to use this um, the mana on the, the teammates. teammates right. Exactly. Like for example, if you give this mana to this Earth Spirit, like you or this Voice Spirit, you reset all their cooldowns, right? Mm -hmm. A little bit, so they can like keep on fighting, keep on going, keep on going. It's really good. Uh, you just focus yourself. Do that. And as you can see, like you see a, you, you kind of see like a problem, right? Like. Every, yes, yes. You, you, you got, you got, you got them. This is what we call the uh, stock up word syndrome. <laughs> Where you got like, now, now you got like four observer words in your backpack because you haven't, you, you feel like you haven't found the time to place it, right? So, like this, you're not the only one who who gets affected by this stuff. Like even professional players. Do. Where they have like so many words and they're like, what? The? I don't have time to play some. But in reality, what you need to do is like, there's an engagement or at some point in your team, yeah. you have to tell your team, yo guys, I'm not fighting. I need to go plant this vision first. And then you just go and do that and then you go fight. So by telling your teammates that, you'll kind of like make sure that they don't start a fight and they'll like wait for you to, you know, plant your words okay. first. Got it? Got it, Captain. Because from like minutes, I think I want to say like nine or ten, you've like have been holding this vision. Two words, I know. It's right? Been stacking up, yeah. Exactly, exactly. And if you plan this vision, then obviously like your teammates will have a better chance of better taking team right? fights, right? Because they can see the enemy and they know where to be, and they can also farm better with vision. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, you have a four staff. Oh my God, you're rich. All right. This, this, this a is lot more... of assists. Yeah, you, you got a lot. Of, you got you got a lot. You got your four, two, and five. Look at that. Like you know, honestly, like your positioning in fights and how you cast spells. There's no problems with that. Like I feel you've been doing that very well. Um, apart from obviously you know using chakra on your allies or something like that. But so you go on the invoker here. Like yeah, I, I would definitely just recommend using this on your allies more than like on mm -hmm. the enemy. It, it, the I'm mana sure. burn is just not that much unless it's like some you know, very late into the team fight. Uh, it's just so much better. Like for example, if your void spirit goes in, he uses a remnant, and then you give him again, you can use the second remnant right away. Like it's amazing. That would be definitely more ideal. So here you deward them, playing around the mid lane, playing with the team, great stuff. Yep, you have uh, other wards here, planted down here, so the sentry here does not see this ward. I like that. That's very good. Like planting vision where the enemy um, won't put sentries is like a very big thing too, right? Because you don't want to give them 200 gold and XP every time they yes. deward you. So you take the outpost first. I like that. Oh, uh, you, you didn't put a sentry here? Did you not put a sentry here? No. Oh, you didn't have no, any no sentries sentry. left. Yeah. Oh no, you have sentry. You do, you do, you do. So like, um, you definitely wanna... Oh, I put one here, one in mid, I think. Ah, you put it over the... here. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, thought, okay. Yeah, yeah, okay. Alright, because you didn't sentry this and your teammates were all playing in this area and there was a, like a pretty much a 50-50 yes. chance it's probably a ward there, right? And if you go Radiant Vision, there, there's actually a ward there. Because um, this is a very common ward place, especially at your MMR that you're playing at. Like, heal wards are like super common at your MMR that you're playing at, right? So, um, this, this is probably why the enemy started the fight, is because they actually yeah, see you guys. they had a ward, yeah, yeah. Exactly, they see you guys, so they jump you. And this is where like you kind of want to tell your team guys I don't have any more sentries um, and they might have a ward here so be careful like standing in their vision like just giving them a heads up pretty much 
But at this point, like, you guys are so strong that it didn't matter that they even yeah. started the fight on you. But in a game where you're not as this strong, that might have been, like, the game losing fight, you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Like, them I being able to see you there. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Dyer's middle tower's middle tower has fallen. Now you deward them, you get so much gold and XP again. Yeah, it's pretty good. I mean, I, I feel like at this point you guys have very good control of the game. You go mid lane, you shove that out. Great. Um, as a mid lane, uh, sorry, as a support who has a lane shove, I love doing this a lot. Where like I go mid and I'm the one shoving the mid lane now, so my supports, mm -hmm. sorry, my cores can like farm all the jungles and stuff. So like, yes. you know the idea of how I said um, in chess, like controlling mid? Uh, mm -hmm. Mid lane is controlled by your creep waves. So if you can kill the creeps before the enemy, and it goes into the enemy, you get so much information. Because if, let's yes. say, nobody's protecting or pushing this lane out, what does that mean? They can be either here or Anyone, here, right? Yeah. Yeah. They could be either, yeah. sorry, bo bottom or middle only. And if mm -hmm. all your teammates are bottom, right? Let's say yeah. pushing this lane out, and you're pushing this lane out, that means they're all here. It's like kind of like a map pack if you can actually get this mid lane out constantly. And what you do here by going middle and blasting this is amazing because you always like, it's like your natural instinct will tell you exactly where the enemy is after that. <laughs> Go now boldly into the light. Dyer's top Ooh. top. I mean, I, I love how like you're always thinking about the force, the what the outposts and the bounty yeah. units and stuff. Like a lot of support players won't do that, and they're just focused on killing people. And to be honest, this patch in Dota is all about um getting outposts, bounty units, and uh stopping the enemy from farming. And like, the rewards, yeah. Nice salt. You, would not have done well. you probably wouldn't catch them unless you dropped the ult there anyway. Yeah. Okay, I think that's good. I think that's good for this replay. That's good enough. Yeah. I'll send you one where we lose badly. Oh, I, I actually, yeah. <laughs> I think I, I think that's probably good enough for this replay, right? Like, I feel for you sure. probably picked up Learned a lot. Learned a lot. Learned a lot. Uh, I don't know if you might want to write down one or two of those things that we talked about um yes i wrote down the early ones we talked about because the later on you said yeah i was actually thinking that but it's just uh yeah the smoking part could have been better but right. um i'm definitely gonna rewatch rewatch this so oh that's we're awesome good. that's good, we're good. Um, yeah i mean this will be all uploaded to youtube so in you uh, yes. definitely watch that back if you would like to so yeah, so I, would I just want to that. summarize a little bit about um, some of the stuff that we covered, right? That yeah. I think was big. That's one, uh, push the bottom, it, when the bottom lane is, sorry, your safe lane is pushed out, make sure you go pull the small camp. Yeah. Um, hard for the enemy to contest that, and you want to get your experience. Uh, secondly, um, we talked about harassing the enemy, yeah. right? In the oh, lane at the start. At the right time, yeah. Yeah, and then you can yeah. go pull by checking like the timer and what it is. Uh -huh. um, yeah. Then we also covered the bounty runes timings, right? Yes. Uh, also, against mid laners who have bottles, you got to make sure that you go to those power runes earlier and before they, they get there. Because like yeah. I swear, mid laners, if they don't get their bottle, like if they don't get anything bottled up, your lanes can't die. Your silence can't die. So most of the time when your silence are dying because of a mid laner ganking is because they picked up a rune in their bottle. Mm-hmm. Think about runes as a, as another item. It's like you're giving a free item to the enemy. Yeah, early game it's really important, right? Exactly. Kind of makes it work in game. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. So and you um. The five, yeah, the five minute, ten minute push mark, the mid lane, how it controls. Yep. Right, and then uh, five minute is like five minute, ten minute catapults, and try to see where which catapult or like which which core hero that you can play with to apply pressure to the enemy tower with the catapult. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. And uh, we also talked about the wards a bit, uh, with yeah. where you can smoke up and get some vision out uh, with your Oops. with your wards. Oh. If you're having a hard time warding already, mm -hmm. yeah. smoke and ward. Okay, uh, that was good. Uh, that was uh, that was definitely a lot. What is this? Um, this is a game where you lost. Yeah, I feel <laughs> like. Yeah, I don't know how that could have gone the other way. Maybe maybe okay. it was just the hero to pick. I'm not sure. 
Ooh. I would like to know you. Ooh. Know this was earlier? Yeah. Uh, sorry, this you don't was, have to go played... through everything. Just, just like, I think the beginning is good enough. Okay, so you want to just check out, like, what happened. Yeah. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll just summarize it real quick. Because I don't want, to be honest, like, I don't want to, like, teach you more than what we've already covered right now because our brains mm. can't handle that much like information and process it all you know there's at some mm -hmm. point like you're gonna get diminishing returns with what you learn correct so and um yeah so we don't want to do it but like definitely yeah, like at some point we can do like another session where we can see like your improvement and other things that we can focus on My oh wait, my Discord is ooh your webcam. Sorry, okay, should be okay now. Just I think I I check it out though uh, definitely. The most important part is the the start of the game, right? It kind of like sets out uh, sets out the most like maybe in late game it, it depends on the hero lines on, but it's important that you give your hundred and ten percent on setting up the game early on. So I right, feel like exactly. As long as I understand that, I think it's, like it's, it's, that's the most important. So. Early game like amplifies your mid game and late game, right? Mm -hmm. It's like it's like going to the bank. Depending on how much money you put in early, like your interest, like you'll get more money back from the interest, right? Correct. So yes. the better your early game is, the better you know your mid and late game will be. So that's why you put all your efforts into like having a really good early game for your team. Uh -huh. And like that's why you see here players like talk about this thing where like win lane, win game. Right, like yeah, yeah. we see a lot of like uh, teams like always focus on that. All right, so I'm gonna go back. Just gonna quickly watch what happened here. So you're playing um, apparition safe lane with your troll, and then you got a keeper with your pudge. You're playing position four. You buy magic stick against Ursa Lion. Okay. So I think when you go to the offlane like this, you definitely want to probably get winless. Um, cause you want to be able to move in and out of like blocking the small camp and such. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that would be very nice. Um, one thing uh a lot of players do nowadays is they obviously get words for the off lane. Oh the no! Words. Wait, I was supposed to go blood. We exchange. I think. Oh wait, but yeah, okay, no, he's scared. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah. So you buy a word, and I I see a lot of players like do two things. You either put a word back here to like uh de war to kill the carriers uh -huh. that are coming, and you can see that. Uh -huh support uh going to pull or you put a word here in the lane so you can see the support when he leaves the lane to go pull lane as well pull. and you can also harass the ursa right mm -hmm. so um when the go when the guy goes to pull you follow him and you stop him from pulling okay okay but regardless this lane is very hard for you because you're playing against a stun plus ursa and your core is a punch yeah so that's like very very hard um let me just go through the thing a bit here. So your positioning is pretty good. Um, I feel like the best positioning for you to do at this point is like, unless you're planning to go block the camp, which is good, is mm -hmm. play on this side. Play on the opposite side of the enemy support. Okay. So try not to play on the same side of the enemy support because he can just stun you and he can attack you, right? But if you play here and you hit the Ursa, then the support needs to run through the creeps to hit you. And when mm -hmm. he does that, he will pull aggro. And he'll mm -hmm. take like, 100 damage from like three creeps attacking him mm -hmm, mm -hmm. okay so that's uh, like something that could be really uh nice to do all right i'm just gonna fast forward now like you see here like when you're fighting him head on like he just stunned you he removed remove like all of your yeah. hp it feels really bad so you can see here this guy because the ursa pushed out the lane a bit like he pulled and now you guys yeah. feel super bad right yeah. So when you're playing the offlane, uh, your bread and butter is this big camp. So as soon as the lane gets pushed like this, what you should do is you should think about this creep, next creep wave coming and pull this big camp here. So the Ursa will be pissed off and like lose creeps instead. Mm -hmm. Right? Because like you see what you did, you kind of just like walk back to yeah. your carrier, but you, sh you need to be pulling this. So when you're in the safe lane, you're, this is your big camp you can pull and it's hard. Uh, or, or sorry, this is the camp that you want to pull. When you're in the offlane, uh, you want to pull this big camp as much as you can by yep. pushing the lane out. Okay. Then you put a sentry in the small camp. I like that because you're blocking and make sure the enemy can't pull. Yeah, it's it's very hard lane like for your Earth, for against the Ursa regardless. This lane is like Radiant really really difficult. 
Because he got a punch. Yeah. And it looks like your bottom lane is getting wrecked, right? It's pretty hard to. Uh, they had a... Your, your, sorry, the enemy mid laner was a Nature's Prophet who TP'd down there and killed your lane. So, in a lot of Dota games, like if you lose two side lanes, or like if you lose two out of three lanes, uh, it's very hard to come back. And here you buy like a magic wand first. Um, I want to tell you that magic wand buying it early game is not good. So, like you can buy magic stick, right? But upgrading to wand when you have all these empty item slots is like a waste of 150 gold. Money, okay. okay. Right? Makes sense. Yeah. yeah um, because yeah. you want to use that gold to get like either your wind lace or your boots first. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that was a mistake I made. Yeah. Because like obviously you're fighting against Earth and Lion, you're gonna need that movement speed bad. Yes. Badly. So in this lane, um, because you have like such a hard lion Ursa lane, what I would have done was from like mm -hmm. minute, uh, let's say like level two, like this in this lane, I probably would just skill up blinding illuminate. I would use the illuminate to get the last hits on the range creeps, and then I would just keep pulling the big camp over and over and over and over. So I would tell my Pudge like, hey, this lane is really hard. Let's just shove the lane into the enemy and just keep pulling mm -hmm. the big camp. And if the lane is always shoved into the enemy, this lion can't pull the small camp either. Right? Okay, okay, yeah, so the right. one weakness lion Ursa have is that they can't push out the lane super fast. Where you can, because you're caught mm -hmm. Right? And yeah. then you keep pulling this. And Pudge is not going to care if you take some last. It's a freaking Pudge. Like, he deserves it because he picked Pudge. <laughs> yeah, but like, but... if you pull this creep wave, it's much better. Because instead, what happened was this Ursa had 30 lasses, this Pudge had like 18 lasses, and you guys are like trying to fight head on. Mm -hmm. And it's not working out. Yeah. Right, so right, yeah. if you pull, push this, pull, push this, pull, push this, pull all the time, you're going to naturally get like a 50-50 lane instead. Mm -hmm. That's what you could have done to make sure that this... Um, lane that wasn't a disaster for your team Dyer's top tower is under attack bottom tower is under attack you're kind of like still top now you TP bottom maybe you're like thinking oh maybe I can do something down here instead yeah I was like I give up on the top yeah yeah, I mean, I, it just kind of feels like um, you guys just lost a lot of lanes this game. Yeah, we did. We did. And this Nature's Prophet as well is like super far. Actually, you guys lost pretty much three lanes this game, right? Uh, considering the Nature's Prophet's net worth as well. Even though the SF does have a lot of lasses, it's just like the impact that Nature's Prophet has had on this map. Was Radiance yeah. Much. Has been killed. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. He's insane, yeah. The prophet. So you guys go to the mid lane. I, I think. Oh, we're gonna do shit. I think it's just the the important part that you explained that that's what right. I should have done. After Your that, lane, it was right? chaos. It was exactly. like, no, we're not gonna come back anyway. So it was really yeah, like, yeah. hard. So you guys had one opportunity to uh, come back in the mid lane here, or sorry, in this game, is go 10 minutes, bring all your goons to the mid lane. Bring everybody to the mid lane. Your SF is stronger than the Nature's Prophet. I think you guys could try to bring people to the mid lane and like, try to go maybe from around and like try to get some kills going. Maybe like your Pudge, you could have rotated mid lane with your SF. Maybe you hook somebody, right? Mm -hmm. Like in this levels of game, in this levels, like when uh, MMR, what normally happens is the cores are always on the side lanes, and they just AFK farming at ten minutes. Yes. Right, it, and that means, that, yeah, yeah. The person, who, the team who brings the most amount of heroes to the mid lane will have like a super big advantage. It's really good. Like you, you should watch if if you ever get a chance. Like if you see OG games, you'll see them randomly bring like five heroes to the mid lane at like eight minutes in the game, <laughs> because like they just run at that tower. And run at the heroes wanna, there. Yeah, they just want a higher advantage, like you said. They want to, like, the Mitar is, is the most important. Yeah, exactly. And yeah, you just, like, start make you just make the enemies make so many mistakes. And, like, they just start yeah, panicking when they see, like, five heroes middle. 
they don't know what to do and then they just start tipping in one by one and then you have a punch so if they start tipping in one by one and punch hooks one guy and they die gg like they just outnumbered they're gonna feed the mid tower to you or feed four kills to you yeah damn yep, yep. anyway that, that, that that's pretty much like like you said the lane the lane push top lane thing like that's the best way that you could have um played your lane is just mm -hmm. keep skill up illuminate and your chakra and then just push that lane out mm -hmm. um like just level one illuminate is already good enough right it does 150 yeah. or 200 damage even that's a yep. lot of damage so they can just push that lane out and keep pulling the big camp and then that naturally will make the lion not be able to um pull this camp okay we're good i, I don't yes, want to like yes. again yeah, i don't no, want to no, overload no, your no, mind three, yeah. no no this is good this is good i was like yeah after that everything went down south Right. Yeah, we should have, like, yeah, maybe, like you said, if we had done that, then probably had a chance for comeback, but we didn't. Yeah, you just, like, if you do that, you will get more um, experience, and you guys wouldn't lose, like, three lanes, for example. Oh, At wait, least wait, wait. one can of your you, lanes would go Can up. you go back to the, can you go back to the replay again? Um, yeah, what's somewhere up? in the middle, in the middle, because Arsa keeps, they kept taking Rosh, right? Yeah. And the thing is, they are pushing out, they wouldn't push. So... Okay. For me, I thought it was just better to stay put in sight until, like, you know, um, until they push. But they were never pushing. So well, what are you supposed to do? Because he pretty much the idle after that. And he, it's in the middle. Like, where okay. when you were, were, like, just at the base high ground after the second dark. Everything's, yeah, I think it's So, wait, one minute in the game was that? Uh, probably 30. Oh, 30. Okay. Yeah. Roshan has been. This one? To the dark. Yeah, so they take Rosh. And they won't push. They're just so scared. And at some like, and at one point we had to just be like, okay, guys, let's just smoke and just, let's just catch them. Was that a good idea or was that like the right call to make? Okay, Maybe first of all, you guys have very good vision, so you can see a lot on your side of the map, at least. And you yeah, see but they were everybody not going pushing bottom. at all. Yeah. Right, right, right. Troll is trying to split push top. Yeah. Oh, they do push here though, right? Wait, is this a wrong fight we're looking at? Oh uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think before that, the one yeah, so before this. Much earlier, okay. Yeah, the the first and second rush. Do they take a? Okay, so this one, probably this one, I guess. Yeah. So they go here, they do Roshan. Gonna watch from your guys' perspective, so I know exactly what you're looking at. But they're split pushing bottom first. Yeah. Networks. And we're just we're yeah we're just like ah right. they keep killing you guys like uh on the map yeah because because yeah because the troll is trying to split push right and then he's taking the young lefty that's gonna block him yeah well they are taking your tier two oh, yeah, that, after like, that it's, it's pretty much like yeah they don't show up for quite some time and we're just like we're just like yeah there you go it's like we don't know what to do anymore and they're just mm -hmm. so what they're doing right now is they're like kind of um like starving you guys out right they're making yeah. sure that if they if you come out of the base then they will kill you but That's so yeah and after some time we do smoke and we go yeah so we're, yeah this is, this is yeah we're like we can't you guys got like, scanned by the way it. they scanned you guys yeah oh he didn't click bkb but he had that abyssal anyway um i think at this point in the game like the best things to do for you guys is like Keep the lanes pushed out. Uh, I would go and like probably take over one of the two jungle areas and just plant vision, like wards and sentries. So maybe like, like maybe you want to control for the next Roshan because their Aegis is out, right? That's why they're doing this because they're waiting for next Roshan to spawn, right? I would have been like, guys, let's go top area. Let's plant wards and sentries here and here, right? So our troll mm -hmm. has somewhere to farm and we can farm all the waves that are coming in top and middle. And then by controlling this area with like some wards. If anybody walks up this hills, you sh you guys should kill them right away. So that should have been the plan instead of like rushing. Just this. randomly smoking yeah. in somewhere, right? Like this feels like just a complete random smoke. Try to like do something, mm -hmm. right? But it's better if like you guys like get out of the base and like try to get some vision up and like try to control at least like forty percent of the map. Because mm -hmm. you, as not, you can see, not be aggressive, right? And yeah, you want the enemy to make mistakes. You're not stronger than they are. And the way the enemy makes mistake is by walking into your vision and you killing them. 
and you having deworded their vision, right? Yeah, yeah. Because like if you if you're here and you like plant ward here and you plant a ward here and you sentry, right, all this area so they yeah. can't see you. That means you can farm this wave. You can farm this wave as it comes in, and anybody who walks up these hills will just die to you. Your team, right? Okay. Unless you see five heroes running in, then you can just run away. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because this felt like super, you know, this is what they want you to do. This is like run yeah. into them and feed. Yeah, that was bad. Alright, that's good. Any other questions you got? Yeah, it was just that. Uh, I was like, shit, man. Yeah. Could have done better. Like I said, we could have made a comeback, but yeah, we kind of made mistakes over and over again so that was done that's okay i mean as long as you learn a lot and you can apply that to your games like thinking a little bit more about the game can help you you know evolve yourself right yeah like if you want to go that next step but yeah like these things it's just like the stuff that's very apparent to me that i see uh, in the games mm -hmm. and it should naturally um or like improve you right away lineup wise what which one did, like do you prefer like from these two these two um i think radiant your guys's team fight is better but i feel like both lineups kind of suck <laughs> take that <laughs> because you guys have a pudge off and you don't have any like solid disables, i know right? i was like shit but to I be double, honest double Exactly. I doubled down on that. Yeah. I was like, oh, oh after that I feels it, I'm like, bad. Yeah. Fuck. Um, but if it was like highest level of gameplay, I would say Radiant lineup is a little bit better because you guys have Shadow Fiend who can push out all the lanes, and I think he could have had all the control in the world that game. Because like he's fighting against Nature's Prophet, he would be much higher level. Just keep farming and farming and farming, and then he could have like killed people and snowballed. If we're talking like you know super high games good i feel like i've learned a lot you know yeah i'm glad it's great it did. Oh.